dialogue in Christian uh, theology. If you look historically, even the divine nature of Jesus was not necessarily, uh, and again, I'm not here uh, as a scholar in Christianity or Islam, but uh, historically speaking, uh, uh, the divine uh, nature of Jesus was discussed throughout the years, till even now, some, sometimes we can find that even non-Muslim uh, dialogue, so to speak. Uh, I, you know, one time I was talking to my partner and I told him, if it wasn't this specific question, there would be no reason for Islam to exist. I was um, privileged to actually be raised in Jesuit school as I was Muslim. I mean, back home you know, in Syria, you know, Muslims, 20% uh, of Syrians are, are, are Christian. And we have a lot of uh, Christian school, and I was raised in one Christian school, Jesuit school, which is part of uh, Catholic. And uh, we have a lot of knowledge of uh, Christian philosophy. Uh, and uh, our uh, uh, you know, rules, our, our behaviors with our uh, Christian uh, brothers and sisters are exactly the same. The main issue was that, that specific philosophical issue, whether, whether um, uh, Jesus is the Son of God or is He divine or not. Now, Muslim thinks uh, about monotheism as its purest, strongest term. So basically, you, there is a God, looking around, you will realize there is God, uh, or this is, I'm talking about the Islamic belief. There is a creator, uh, he's God, and he is, has to be the only God. Well, let's consider what the Quran says about Jesus Christ. In uh, Surah chapter 4, verse 157, it says, Because of their saying, they slew the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, Allah's messenger. They slew him not, nor crucified, but it appeared so unto them. Lo, those who disagree concerning it are in doubt thereof. They have no knowledge thereof, save pursuit of a conjecture. They slew him not for certain. Then going down to verse 171 of the same chapter, it says, O people of the scripture, do not exaggerate in your religion, nor utter aught concerning Allah, save the truth. The Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, was only a messenger of Allah and his word, which he conveyed unto Mary, and a spirit from him. So believe in Allah and his messengers, and say not three. Cease, it is better for you. Allah is only one God. Far is it removed from his transcendent majesty, that he should have a son. Well, this is a problem. Because whoever wrote the Quran, which came about some 500 years after Christ, claims to know more about the events than the people that were there. For example, in Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 says, Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he began asking his disciples, saying, Who do the people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, well, some said John the Baptist, others Elijah, but still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And he said to them, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Now notice he doesn't say a son as though there's many, but the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you Simon Barjona because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my father, who is in heaven. Now I've picked up quite a pile of literature over the years visiting mosques around the United States. And uh, it's, it's interesting that uh, the majority of the literature that's published, they try to present a polite rebuke of the Bible and Christianity. But some of it is so obviously an attack on the, on the Christian faith that it can't be denied. They have much disdain for the Trinity. In a tract that they uh, publish, actually it's uh, put out by the Institute of Islamic Information and Education out of Chicago. Uh, I picked, uh, picked up this copy at the Islamic Center in San Diego. It reads, let's put this together in a different form. One person, God the Father, plus one person, God the Son, plus one person, God the Holy Ghost, equals one person, God the what? Is this English or is this gibberish? Well, so because they can't comprehend it, they call it gibberish as though we should be able to comprehend God. Then on the back panel it reads, Christianity claims to be a monotheistic religion. Monotheism, however, 
has its fundamental belief that God is one. The Christian doctrine of the Trinity, God being three in one, is seen by Islam as a form of polytheism. Christians don't revere just one God, they revere three. Well, see, once again, they don't understand the Trinity, so they attack it. Christians don't believe that there are three gods. They believe there's one God with three natures. Just as man is made up of spirit, soul, and body, he is only one, he has three different parts. I've had Muslims laugh at me for using that illustration. But I like to say that trying to explain the Trinity to a Muslim is a bit like trying to explain rocket science to a camel. The question of how Muslim Sharia law might work in our Western multicultural democratic society was presented to the panel. Neither the time nor the expertise was available to answer such a broad topic effectively. A recent item in the news, however, might be a good example of how Sharia law might affect those who are critical of Islam. When Dove World Outreach Center placed a sign out in front of their church in Florida that read, Islam is of the devil, they soon found that Muslim connections in the banking world brought pressure upon them. The Royal Bank of Canada and their Sharia Finance Group called in the loan on their church. Based in Raleigh, North Carolina, RBC ranks among the five largest banks in North Carolina. Suppose a young person with a student loan through RBC began to voice a negative opinion about Islam. What do you think might happen to him? Because of pressure from Muslims, Franklin Graham was banned from leading in prayer at a Pentagon observance of the National Day of Prayer gathering because he considers Islam evil. Consider what pressures one would be under if the whole government was under Sharia law. An example of Muslim deception in America is in a tract about polygamy in Islam distributed in many American mosques. It states that, quote, Early Christians invented the ideas that women were full of sin and man was better off never to marry. Since this would be the end of mankind, these same people compromised and said, marry only one. Now the Bible teaches no such thing. Many followers and supporters of Christ were godly women. The Muslim tract claims, quote, that artificially created monogamy has become a factor in ruining the family structure and the social and economic and political systems of the country. Then, Mormonism is cited as an example of a Christian group that has supported polygamy, though they fail to point out that Mormonism is actually a heretical cult. The Quran actually gives men the right to discipline any unruly wives. Quote, As to those women on whose part you see ill conduct, admonish them first, next, refuse to share their beds. And last, beat them, and then in parentheses it says, lightly, if it is useful. That's in Surah 4, verse 34. Now usually when you cite these verses from the Quran, the argument is going to be, well, it doesn't really say that quite that way in the Arabic. That's a bad English translation. Well, the English translation that I just quoted from was endorsed by the Chief Justice of Saudi Arabia, the guy was actually the imam of the Grand Mosque of Mecca for a number of years. In the movie, it is claimed that suicide bombers are actually outside of Islam because the Quran condemns suicide. Well, actually, suicide bombers consider themselves to be martyrs, which is actually glorified in the Quran. There's a quote supposedly from Muhammad uh, taken from the Hadith that claims, I would love to be martyred in Allah's cause and then come back to life and then get martyred and then come back to life again and then get martyred and then come back to life again and then get martyred, unquote.